Okay, Matt. Sorry about the noise in the background. It is what it is. So we're ready. You were kind enough to want to wait until we got in our new Mainspring Arbor Jewels, and we have them. The brand new upper and lower Mainspring Arbor Jewels. Brand new. They're perfect. We have uppers and lowers now. There they are. I went ahead and I installed the first set in my 6306. These are watches two and three. They're gonna get theirs too. So I wanna thank you so much for your patience and uh, I sincerely appreciate it. There's, I kinda can't thank you enough, but we are gonna go ahead. Um, we are gonna, you said just go ahead and do both of them. This watch has aftermarket hands and an aftermarket insert. You said not to worry about that, but just to go ahead and service it anyway. Okay, fair enough. Ditto with this one. This one is, uh, that's a nice watch. We've got a couple scratches on the glass, but that's a nice watch. It's worn, but uh, that's a nice watch. Okay, so I'm gonna get going. My videos aren't as long as they used to be simply because it's, I don't know, it's just, it's a lot of work to produce these things. And I wanna, I don't wanna delay these things too much. So, let's get going. Again, sorry for the noise. Yeah, this is a really nice watch. Look at the mirror finish on this case back. It's got a lot of the frosting on it. That's nice. Um, clearly original. Oh yeah. Here's your old case back seal. Yeah, that's pretty floppy, hmm? That's usually the only thing I'm ever really super concerned with. Uh, balance is swinging nicely. Never got any water inside that I can see. Crown screws down. Threads look good. Ah, it's intact. Yep. Yeah, we got something got dragged around underneath here. Let's see what that is, just for fun. Since I've got you here, again, sorry about the noise, but isn't a darn thing I can do about it. It is what it is. I'm not seeing any wear on the edge of the bridges, so that's nice, that's a good sign. Real. See, this thing's moving around. Something under here got caught and dragged around for a while. I don't know what it was. Yep. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think we're going to see any real surprises, but if we do, we'll check back in. Um, and I'll show you when I put in the new jewels, we'll talk about that. So I got uh, plates apart, uh, pretty dirty. You can see all the sort of, that's the sort of ring of filth here. And definitely something was getting dragged around, probably just a chunk of grot, which you can see that's just dirty looking. But the most important, I mean, not important, but this is dirty, but you can actually see scoring over here. That is from the mainspring arbor tipping over, which then tips over the ratchet wheel, which then acts like a saw and it grinds into the top. So we are gonna, we're gonna swap these both out. We're gonna have the new lowers and the new uppers there. And this thing will just be so amazingly awesome. Let's, uh, woof, boy, this mainspring is dirty. Cry, criminy. Come on. Yeah. Look at the filth. And even more filth. Okay, well, none of this is surprising. So we're getting a little closer. Here's that beautiful jewel. See if your train is doing what trains do. There you go. I love that. Now for the funnest part. Always the funnest part. I know y'all like to dig on this. When the magic happens. Come on. Get in there. There she blows. Yes. And there she kicks. Mm-hmm. That's looking pretty spicy. Yeah, that's looking good. Cool. All right, well, it's the end of the day, so we'll pick it up tomorrow. Well, like it or not, it's tomorrow. Uh, I have, this is the first watch. Uh, it's been on the cyclotron. I'm testing it out. This really is a nice watch. It's a little, I haven't like cleaned it up, polished it, but not that I'm a really much of a polisher, but it's got some fingerprints on it. It's a super nice watch. It's a super, super nice watch. Nice and smooth, clicky. It's got a good rotating ring too. I, I, it's the, the outer, the knurling is all nice and clean. It's all together. Uh, this is a new crystal. I have your original crystal with the seals and all that other stuff. All new seals, all new gaskets, new crystal, totally done. Mainspring Arbor Jewels, top and bottom. So, I'm gonna put this back in here, and back onto the cyclotron, so we can continue testing the automatic winding, which means it is now time for this watch. No, those actually, oh yeah, those, no, those are, those are genuine hands, I think. Um, I think, are they genuine? The sweep hand is. Yeah, I think they're like later 7002 hands because the outside angle on this hour hand is going downwards. But they normally didn't come with that white loom. Normally it'd be a little greenish. We have some minor moisture damage on the dial. You can see right there. Has it been reloomed? I think it has. Somebody did that that IWW style looming where they loom over the top of the the entire top of the white marker. Case is decent. 
Uh huh. huh. That's a seven thousand two ring. That is not a sixty one thirty nine ring. It's sixty three oh nine ring. You can actually see the difference. See, these are sort of tall and thin, these marks with a little dip in the middle, versus these basically perfectly circular machine things. Yeah. So that's incorrect. Eh, well, whatever. You said you weren't interested in making that up. You just wanted to get this redone. That's cool. It should have a 60 through 9 ring, but that's okay. If you decide that you want one, let me know. I do have... 6309 rings. I don't have any inserts, however. And this is an aftermarket insert. I mean, it turns well enough. I don't know what this crystal is. It might be a sapphire. That'd be real typical. Well, let's get the bracelet off there and open it. Okay. Some tool marks on your case back, but I've seen worse. The 28th one made in December 1982. Hey, you got some poo? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely got some pitting on your case back. This looks... Some of this might have been converted into magnetite. In a previous cleaning, some of it is fresh. I'll do my best to get all that stuff out. You definitely got, definitely got some pitting on there. And a little bit on there too. Yeah, actually you can see all the sort of pinpricks and everything. Definitely a few. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to, cl I'll, I'll clean that up as best as I'm able. We'll get, make it bright and shiny. Dusty, hazy movement. A little bit of corrosion there, too. Huh. That's something you don't see very often. This winding bridge is bad. You can see how much that weight's flopping around. Woohoo! Look at that mainspring barrel fly. Yeah. Balance looks okay. Looks pretty steady. Yeah, that's definitely floppy. Oh. <sighs> Oh, winding bridge, that's the thing, you know, you, you wear something a lot, and the ball bearings, all the little pieces, ooh, and that's loose. Everything moves around. And the next thing you know, you start getting all kinds of problems. Regardless, we'll clean everything, and let's look at it. Yeah, wee wee! Look at that thing go. Yeah, this that that's roasted, and unlike the earlier ones, you can't take these out and just replace them. You can't do that. Got to replace the whole bridge. But I certainly have them. I certainly have them. And you really want that that winding bridge to be tight because if it's flopping around, you're also going to get pretty inefficient automatic winding, and that'll result in Less accurate, lower accuracy, lower power reserve, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, I guess let's just clean everything. Um, I will preemptively get out a uh, replacement bridge, and we will definitely clean that. Yeah, even as loose as it is, it doesn't really like to turn... It should be easily swinging around in circles. It doesn't want to. Yeah, it's buying. Look at that. It's loose and it's stiff. Yikes. I'm not even going to bother cleaning it. No fucking point. Ooh, bad language. 
Yeah, and you can see too. See, see the, see this black material right here. That is ground up grot and crap from moisture that got in here and sat on this. And that's what this black stuff is. That's corrosion from the from the winding bridge. Okay. Okay, I've got that out. Yeah, the dial and hands are, are of course, absolutely have been relumed. Gosh darn it. You can see them glowing there. So, yeah, this is like a jacket IWW kind of thing. It's an original dial. It's got some water damage. He lumens all the way over the top, basically to the edge of the white. This is an original 7002 handset where he stripped out the loom and matched the loom on the dial. So he loomed them all at the same time. The nice thing is, I mean, about doing that, it's perfectly legible. You don't have to worry about the loom being damaged because modern loom like this is waterproof. Or at least should be. And it looks nice. It's better than just going with aftermarket. It's definitely dirty though. Like the other watch, you can see the stem is intact. Everything's here. You can just see how dirty it is. You can't even differentiate the individual parts. Okay. Anyway, this kind of thing where this kind of reloom job, I actually, I've, I've always, I've never minded it. I think it's a clever way to deal with it. Ooh, your, your mainspring arbor, I'm sorry, your, um, your cannon pinion, it's pretty worn. You're getting a lot of hand shifting. That's, that's unusual. It's unusual for one of these. So I'm going to have to look at that. Let's get the dial the hands off. Yeah, definitely an original dial. It's been cleaned pretty aggressively, but that's okay. it, it's, it looks fine. You can see the interesting mottled fading on the water and resist. So this one saw a lot of sun and then moisture damage and then it got cleaned up. But they did a nice job. There. This is the correct non sua style semi-translucent dial ring. That's real. That's correct. Uh, and you can see though, it's stained a little orangey red. Again, that's going to be from the moisture. Oh, actually, I want to run that through the one, big one. Hang on. Okay, so. Yeah. Let's see what we can see. Just I'm always curious with watches like this because you have a watch, you know, that has lives a hard working life, and then it gets repaired. Moisture damage can do a lot of funky stuff. That jewel is dirty. Look at these stone faces of these stones. Yeah, yep. Yeah, look at that. They've got a they've got a channel across them. Yep, on both sides. Okay, so what happens is you get corrosion and dirt and a lot of moisture and you run and run and run a watch or you run it and run it and run it. What happens is you have all this material in here, dust and stuff like this, and it mixes with the lubrication and it turns into what's called a cutting slurry. Uh, it's an abrasive semi-liquid, sort of a paste, and it, uh, it it's one of the few things I see that will that will eat into um, pallet fork stones. So these have little teeny tiny gullies on each face from being scraped by the dry and dirty things there. So we're going to be looking at a new new pallet fork for sure. Um, I hope that the
that's got nice it's got very good end shake so does the third wheel uh, it's a little bit of flop in the fourth wheel you can see can see it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Look at that wheel fly. Yep, uppy duppy, boop, boop, boop. Yeah, that's. Uh, this wheel could well be roasted. This bushing is absolutely bad. I can see it flopping around. So, we've got a couple other things going on. Yeah. Oh, would you stop that? get up there that's the thing man you run a watch for a long time with no maintenance and letting it get dirty inside and moisture and it'll just eat the movement alive yeah look at that lower mainspring arbor port is so worn it's grinding into the top of the bridge Yeah, look, it's even grinding into the underside of the bridge right there. So I'm going to clean all this stuff, but I'm sincerely, I, I am, am anticipating that the fourth wheel is bad. Possibly the escape wheel. I have to look at those teeth. Maybe not. I hope not because it's got good position otherwise. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, look, and someone. That's old school. Boy, you don't see that anymore. So, we know the lower mainspring opera port is badly worn, right? Well, here, this is what the old school dudes, you get your staking set and you pound away at the plate here to try and squish the metal this way to close up the hole. It's the wrong way to do it. But if you can't get those jewels, what are you going to do? Done right, it works. But we're going to put a jewel in there, and that'll be the end of it. Well, that doesn't... That doesn't... No, that doesn't... That's good. Center wheel looks okay. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, let me get this apart. Okay, on the bottom side, your... On the top side, rather, the, the center wheel is good. Up here, that is, that's real floppy. But then again, I don't have the, I don't have the center wheel bridge on, so maybe I'm, maybe I am once again not thinking clearly. Arabic English day wheel. Pretty typical for a world model. It's dirty, but it's flat. Hazy. Everything's hazy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's loose too. This is the this is the 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 wheel to adjust to do a I'll just make sure that that's firm down. I can see it's come up a little bit, but okay. I got to get into it now. Oh, check just back the in. Process with of stripping stuff apart. Um, open your mainspring barrel. Uh, nothing terrible, but this is something you see. Somebody was in here and they um, they used lubricant on it, but it wasn't the correct S four, and they also didn't clean out the thing very well. So it's like this mix of. S4 and some other kind of lubricant and you can see how chewed up that barrel is. I was talking about cutting slurry. That's what it does. See this dark stuff? That's abrasive crap. So that kind of ate the top of your mainspring barrel. I'm going to clean that up. I might need to erase, erase. I might need to replace that one. Yeah. Yeah, you see here, I just rolled, I just rolled your mainspring arbor. Look at that. All that stuff, that's metal. 
That's metal. Yep. Yippers. That is why you don't want to do that. Also, your um your crown gasket was busy disintegrating. You can actually see it's coming to pieces. Still pliant, but that's it. Let's see what we got going on here. And your, yeah, your mainspring is also, this is supposed to be, this is kind of worn out. Um, usual thing, I'll try to clean it up and we will see what I can do. Yeah, you see, look, there's some of the old S4 mixed up with the uh, oil. Yep. Okay, so I'll clean this up and we'll revisit. Okay, so we're out of the cleaner. There's this lower mainspring arbor jewel. You can see the remains of where the person tried to pound this out. It doesn't affect the strength or stability. It's, it's just a little divots. The rest of the wall is there. So that's in. Uh, this center wheel jewel is totally out of whack. It was pushed down and like this. It's weird. So I had to bring it back up. No one ever remembers to check this. It's, I swear. Um, here is your, there is your train bridge. God darn it. There's the train bridge. You can see there's the new center wheel jewel is there. The new upper mainspring arbor jewel is there. So that is corrected. That's that worn bushing you'll get back. And you can look at it when you, when you, yeah, there it is. There's your bushing. There's the upper mainspring arbor bushing. Oh, the um, mainspring barrel, the top of it, yours was destroyed. I mean, destroyed. That stuff, look at how deep the scoring is on the inside of this. And that's, again, that's from that, that mash of dirty mainspring grease mixed with fresh oil and it turns into that cutting slurry just ate this like like wow so i had to replace that um one other thing we have to talk about your case the rotating ring which was 7002 won't stay on at all i can i can pull it off with my fingers so we're gonna have to re replace that ring at a minimum uh so it is what it is okay i got all that together so there's our jewels, the jewels in the mainspring arbor. This is a new pallet fork. Um, there's that jewels in place. Uh, is this thing up to power? That's the big question. Oh gosh, it winds so nicely. Gosh, it's so smooth. Wow, nice. Cool. I mean, it's not that my other setups weren't nice before, but that's just, there's just a little bit of smoothness there. Come on now. <laughs> That's always a good sign, isn't it? There we go. Well, now I'm at the end of my day, so we're going to have to let this run in overnight. I was getting at some sticky hairspring action with this earlier. And I think I might have to look at it because it looks like it's binding up a little bit. Uh, let's see. Whoops. Yeah, it's definitely, I'm still having hairspring problems. Come on, pop. No. I have to, I'm going to have to go and look at that hairspring. Okay, there that is. All better. No more sticking hairspring. Ugh. Okay, that's good news. Uh, let me just, a little bit of time left. Let me just put on the time graph right quick. Okay, here we go. I don't know which one's gonna let you see that better. So as usual, I am not going to, you're not gonna see me adjust the arms, but you. I will narrate as I look at this. I have no idea what we are gonna find. Let us find out together. Woo, that's a lot of beat error. Beep. That's halfway as 
out of beat as it possibly could be. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to adjust that arm first to bring the beat error in line. And I moved it a little bit to the outside. That's a little better. Note that the accuracy is going up because the, the direction I'm moving it is effectively shortening the length of the hairspring, which means that it's going faster. So I'm just going to try to bring it in the line. Okay, we're getting better. Now I'm going to have to drop that accuracy a little bit to get rid of that rate climb so it'll flatten out for me. There, see I overshot it a little bit so it's going down again. Little adjustment there, yeah, you see, it's starting to come into line. Again, I'm adjusting the beat error, not the accuracy. Okay, got that to zero, have a little bit of beat. Let me see if I can drop that. Too much, let's bring it back. Just gonna try to get a little bit more of that beat air out of there. Come on. Mm -mm, too far. Okay, I think that well, let's get that rate up a little bit. Okay, I think that that is a good place to start for a rough adjustment. And let's, and yeah, it's, it's 5.30. It's time for me to pull the plug and get out of here. We'll let this run in overnight, and we will revisit and see what in the world happens. Yeah, no, that was, that was that's a that's a good line for output right now. Let me just let's go to, till tomorrow and we'll see how. Just heading upstairs, uh, looking at the numbers right before I go. So we're we're seeing some improvement. Yep. Good. I'm sure tomorrow morning we'll have even better news. It's so fun being able to do this. Matt, so there we go. There we are. This is a really nice watch. Not much really to say about this. It was straightforward, beautiful, nice, usual stuff. We talked about it. And here's this. So again, as I said, this is not the correct rotating ring. It's not, it doesn't come off quite as easily as I was fearing. Uh, and it does rotate smoothly. So I, I took, as with everything else, I took the entire rotating ring apart and I cleaned everything and reset it so it's all nice and fresh. So, I mean, it doesn't hold firmly to the case as it, as it, as a regular 6309 ring would, but There that is. Uh, I have your, there's your, your bracelet. And I have, this packet has all of your spare parts in it. Uh, all the, all the, this stuff, you know, crystals and metal parts and all that stuff is in here. And you will get that. And that's it. Oh, Rocket, Rocket, what's going on? Sorry, Rocket wants, wants, uh, wants to get out of here. Okay. Matt, thank you again. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your good humor. I sincerely appreciate it. Thank you.